welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering and we are discussing module 3 compressibility and consolidation and this is lecture 9 and we in this lecture we are going to discuss about methods for accelerating consolidation settlements and the radial consolidation concepts. So in the previous lecture we have you know solved some examples wherein it involves long time for consolidation particularly in depending upon the type of the properties of a soil it may take even even years to complete the consolidation. So in order to you know the construct the structures or in order to eliminate the you know the settlements before the construction of a structure there are methods which are available for accelerating these consolidation settlements. So in this lecture we will be concentrating on this aspect. So this is module 3 lecture 9 on compressibility and consolidation and we are actually addressing the methods for accelerating consolidation settlements and the radial consolidation concepts in this particular lecture methods for accelerating consolidation settlements. And we also said that the settlements which are elastic settlements primary consolidation settlement and secondary consolidation settlement. So majority of the soils actually particularly have fine grained soils they actually exhibit very high amount of primary consolidation settlements if they are normally consolidated or lightly over consolidated in nature. So before any you know the discussion of a method the first and foremost method is that removal and replacement of a uh, you know problematic soil. So one of the oldest and simplest method is to simply remove and replace the soil. But soils that will have to be replaced include contaminated soils and organic soils if you are having or marshy soils and all. So this method is usually practicable if it is above the ground water table and it also it is also practicable if the volume of the soil to be removed or replaced uh, is uh, you know. Uh, have a limited quantity. If it is involves the large quantities there will be you know difficulties or in a, it will be highly uneconomical uh, to uh, you know go for removal and replacement technique. So in the instances when it appears that too much consolidation settlement is uh, likely to occur and the volume of the soil which actually involved also uh, is uh, you know large in nature. Then in that case you know you know the in order to eliminate the APS that you know too much consolidation settlement if it is likely to occur due to the construction of structures it may be desirable to apply some surcharge loading before the construction. So one of the you know earlier methods for accelerating consolidation settlements is called preloading or pre-compression. In this method uh, you know uh, a certain amount of uh, soil fill is placed over a period of time. So we know that once uh, you know the soil is uh, loaded with a certain uh, load intensity what will happen is that uh, the pore water pressure initially increases and uh, after uh, attaining equilibrium then it undergoes dissipation. So uh, this particular uh, you know concept if you use uh, once the dissipation is completed the soil you know effective stress increases then corresponding the soil shear strength increases. So in instances when it appears that too much consolidation settlement is likely to occur due to the construction of structures it may be desirable to apply surcharge loading before construction. And this technique is actually called as preloading or pre-compression and has been used in many construction projects with success and as reported by Johnson 1970. So this technique is called as a preloading or pre-compression and which is actually involves a loading of the entire area under consideration by a fill of desired height. So the question what we need to address is that what is the height of the fill required and how long we need to uh, you know keep it and whether is there any stability issues which are actually required uh, to be considered on when we are actually having a soft soils at the site. The preloading of the surcharge fill on top of the soil that requires consolidation this is placement what we said is that placement of a surcharge fill on top of the soil that requires consolidation 
and once sufficient consolidation has taken place uh, the fill can be removed and construction can take place that means that if you are having let us say that uh, 10 meter uh, uh, is the total height including the temporary fill and permanent fill then once uh, the if the temporary fill happen to be 3 meters then the 3 meters can be removed and left with 7 meters so that uh, you know the uh, after the consolidation uh, you know it can be left with the permanent loading. So once sufficient consolidation has taken place the fill can be removed and construction can take place. So these surcharge fills are typically of limited height like 3 to 8 meters height and generally produces uh, uh, settlements in the range from 0.3 to 1 meter. So these, uh, these uh, fills when we actually load on the surface of the uh, you know soil and they produce uh, you know uh, the uh, so called uh, uh, you know the heights are 3 to 8 meters and uh, this actually happens because the pore water pressure which is uh, you know gets uh, uh, generated the excess pore water pressure gen gets generated because of the placement of the fill and uh, this actually uh, once the pore water pressure uh, generated and it tries to uh, you know uh, dissipate subsequently when the process of dissipation of the pore water pressure the soil actually gains the effective stress and uh, with that the soil actually the shear strength improves. So this is actually most effective in, effective in clay soils. So in this particular uh, slide uh, a typical graphical form of uh, this technique is actually shown here where we have the load intensity on the y axis and time on the x axis and uh, here uh, this particular uh, yellow uh, fill area which is actually shown and that is uh, nothing but the permanent fill and this is uh, uh, you know this color which is actually shown here which is the uh, surcharge fill. So the question is that how much what will be the time for this preloading or pre-compression that is the, this is the duration of the um, you know the pre-compression and uh, this is uh, you know the load intensity is sigma f plus sigma s once this is completed then uh, you know this will remain the permanent fill will actually will remain and then the road embankment or highway embankment can be completed. So another question is that what should be the intensity apart from sigma f what will be what will be the intensity of the sigma s which is required so that the desired settlements can be achieved. So in the bottom here the time versus settlement plot is shown here and this is if you are actually having a permanent load only uh, in order to get this consolidation settlement it may take long time. Uh, in the sense that uh, you know sometimes uh, within the duration of the project it may not actually happen. Uh, so in view of that in order to accelerate the consolidation uh, one of the viable option what we are actually thinking now is to uh, preload the area with a certain load intensity that is sigma s. So if that actually happens the settlement profile is actually shown here this is permanent load plus surcharge wherein you can see that. Uh, moment uh, you know the end of the preloading comes uh, that is the duration once it completes you can see that the settlement which is actually likely to occur after long duration uh, after placement of the fill uh, was found to occur and because of the additional loading there is an increase in uh, additional uh, generation of excess pore water pressure and then the, the dissipation of pore water pressure is uh, uh, you know faster and you can see that the settlements are also having higher magnitude. So this is the you know the time versus settlement curve for permanent load and surcharge and this is only for permanent load only. So here uh, in order to determine the magnitude of the surcharge pressure required to ensure that the total anticipated settlement under permanent load will be completed in a given length of time and uh, so this is this is one of the objectives. One of the objectives of preloading is that basically to determine the magnitude of surcharge pressure required. Uh, to ensure that the total anticipated settlement under permanent loading will be completed uh, in a given length of time and another objective is that to determine the length of time required to achieve a given amount of time under a given surcharge load. So to determine the length of the time required uh, to achieve a given amount of settlement under a given surcharge load. So we will try to see the methodology which is actually involved and uh, this is actually very simple and wherein we can actually find out uh, generally the time which is actually defined now. Uh, like uh, let, let, let us say that you know we want the settlements to occur uh, the preloading period to be 9 months or 10 months whatever it is if you are specified and in that in that uh, particular period to achieve the settlement what will be the intensity is required that is required to be found out based on the, the subsoil or uh, you know the clay characteristics. 
So let us consider a case where a given construction will require a permanent uniform loading intensity of sigma f that is what we said is that this is the sigma f. Then total primary consolidation settlement due to permanent loading is estimated to be equal to SCF that is the uh, you know this SCF that is and uh, in order to eliminate the expected settlement due to primary consolidation a total load intensity of uh, sigma plus sigma f plus sigma, sigma is equal to sigma f plus sigma s will have to be applied. So uh, the additional load intensity sigma s will accelerate uh, rate of settlement and when a total settlement of SCF has been reached the surcharge can be removed. So the additional load intensity of sigma s will accelerate the rate of settlement when a total settlement of SCF has been reached the surface surcharge can be removed that is the additional surcharge which is placed in the form of a temporary fill can be removed. So here one thing we need to notice here at any if you are having a double drainage that is a HD is equal to 2H and then water flows in the both the directions. So HD is equal to 2H and the water the, the drainage path is, a, is H here that is HD is equal to 2H by 2 that is H here and this is the at any time T. So this is you know before applying the preload once the preload is actually applied the pore water pressure you know the value of you know the degree of consolidation is attained one here and one here at the top and bottom because of the uh, double drainage uh, uh, prevalence and at this mid, mid plane you can see that the, there is a uh, major amount of pore water pressure uh, uh, you know to be dissipated. So you can see that uh, uh, this much portion is at to be dissipated this much portion is already dissipated. So uh, this is uh, you know uh, the uz at uh, z is equal to h the, the pore water pressure at this particular plane and uh, if you are actually having uh, if you are taking average consolidation and that will actually come here. So in this case it appears here that you know though we actually take certain amount of degree of consolidation but here and here already the consolidation actually has you know achieved because of the removal of the load there can be possibility that the net consolidation settlement is because of the some settlement which continue to happen here and some swelling which actually happen here and here. So uh, in case of uh, one way drainage, one way drainage when you are actually having uh, then you can see that this is the isochrone at any time t after uh, placement of the fill and this is the uh, bottom uh, base where the impervious uh, layer is actually there or the, if you are having another clay layer uh, it is actually at that particular plane and uh, uh, this in this case uh, the HD is equal to H because the drainage path uh, water flows in this direction only water flows in this direction because water cannot go through the rock or impervious uh, medium. So in this case uh, this much portion is already dissipated and this is the mid plane consolidation here as UZ is equal to H. So the degree of consolidation UZ will vary with depth and will be minimum at uh, uh, mid plane uh, that is at Z is equal to H. So if the average degree of consolidation U average is used as the criterion for surcharge load removal then after removal of the surcharge the clay close to and plane uh, at the flow close to the mid plane will continue to settle and clay close to the uh, previous layers will tend to swell that is the, the clay close to uh, previous layers will tend to swell. So because of this reason Johnson 1970 has recommended on the conservative side uh, you know for uh, assessing uh, degree of consolidation uh, for the removal of uh, surcharge uh, you know the consolidation uh, degree of consolidation predicted at Z is equal to H or mid plane consolidation. So this will result in the net consolidation settlement. So the entire uh, the phenomenon what has been discussed will result in the net consolidation settlement. So now what we are doing is that according to Johnson 1970 it is preferable to use the mid plane degree of consolidation that u is equal to u at z is equal to h. Now we can write the consolidation settlement as sc is equal to ht by 1 plus e naught cc log sigma naught dash plus sigma f by sigma naught dash. So here sigma f is the permanent fill and once we compute the final consolidation settlement then compute SC F plus S uh, that is fill plus surcharge. So in this case uh, HT by 1 plus E naught CC log sigma naught dash initial effective overburden pressure plus sigma F plus sigma S divided by sigma naught dash. So uh, 
uh, we can define the degree of consolidation as SCF that is the uh, you know the consolidation settlement uh, without any preload and with the uh, preload and uh, surcharge that is settlement uh, um, without any uh, preload and settlement with and with preload pre and uh, permanent load that is SCF by SCF plus S. So by substituting uh, uh, these here 1 and 2 here in uh, 4 uh, we uh, in 3 we get uh, u f plus s is equal to logarithmic of 1 plus sigma f by sigma naught dash uh, divided by logarithmic of 1 plus sigma f by sigma naught dash into 1 plus uh, sigma s by sigma f. So here if you see that this is uh, sigma s by sigma f this is the uh, you know the dimensionless uh, term for uh, sigma s is the uh, magnitude of the fill surcharge to be placed sigma f is the permanent fill and sigma f by sigma naught dash is uh, you know nothing but uh, 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 sigma f by sigma naught dash is nothing but uh, the ratio of uh, permanent fill to the initial overburden pressure. So this uh, particular design can be done by using this or by using the charts which are actually available and for uh, as has been told uh, in order to get the u f plus s uh, it is actually required to use the this particular chart to determine the time factor. So by once we know uh, the uh, the uh, the value of the if suppose if you are actually let us say that uh, we need to uh, you know set a uh, target for the completion of the preload is say in say definite period of time say 9 months then for 9 months and uh, what is the time factor we can determine once the time factor is actually known to us based on that you can actually determine what is u f plus s once the u f plus is actually is obtained then by using this particular uh, plot uh, we can actually determine uh, you know what is uh, you know the ratio of sigma s by sigma f. So the values of u f plus s for several combinations of sigma f by sigma naught dash this is the permanent fill surcharge to the uh, initial effective overburden pressure the different values are actually given here and uh, sigma s by sigma f value is actually given here and uh, note that u f plus s is, is equal to u z at the mid depth that is what actually has been considered according to Johnson 1970. Uh, now once we know the u f plus and once we know the sigma f by sigma naught dash we can actually calculate what is sigma s by sigma f required. So by knowing sigma f we can actually calculate what is the magnitude of the such as so once the time is actually known uh, period of placement then we can actually find out or uh, vice versa we can also know go from uh, once the fill uh, uh, surcharge is actually known we can actually also go from the reverse direction and calculate what is the time. So this uh, once we know sigma f and sigma naught dash and sigma s and sigma f they determine u f plus s and then calculate uh, uh, the time factor and then calculate the time which is required to be maintained in order to achieve this so called the settlement which is actually anticipated uh, because of the uh, you know the uh, without any permanent load. So uh, this, this is the procedure uh, for the preload. Now let us consider an example where uh, during the construction of highway uh, bridge it is proposed to expected that average permanent load on the clay uh, layer will increase by about 115 kilo Pascals and the average sigma dash at the mid depth of the clay layer is given as 210 kilo Pascals and given that the thickness of the clay layer is uh, 6 meters and uh, double drainage that means that effective drainage path is 6 by 2 uh, meters CC compression index is 0 0.28 and uh, effective the initial void ratio is 0.9 coefficient of consolidation is 0.36 into meter square per month uh, and then the clay is normally consolidated in nature. So determine the total consolidation settlement of the bridge without uh, pre compression and determine the surcharge intensity sigma p needed to eliminate the entire pre consolidation settlement with, uh, by pre compression within 9 months. So here if you notice that the time which is actually required. Uh, uh, for the placement of the field is actually defined here. So we can actually adopt like this calculate the consolidation settlement and this settlement works out to be 167.7 mm. So this cannot be a tolerable settlement for a bridge. So hence uh, by taking T V is equal to T suffix S where the time required for surcharge C V by H D R square once you get this we will get the time factor. Now once the time factor is known to us that is 0 
and using uh, uh, you know this plot which we have discussed uh, that is for uh, for sigma f by uh, sigma naught dash that is 0 0.5 or 548 and u f plus s is equal 47 percent we can determine like this uh, for uh, 47 percent and uh, 0 0.548 you can see that uh, this comes to be around uh, uh, sigma s by sigma f uh, comes to be around 1.8 or so. So uh, with this uh, what we get is that sigma s uh, the uh, which comes to be 1.8 into 115 that is 207 kilo Pascals. So the total fill intensity it comes to be uh, 207 plus 115 is about 322 kilo Pascals and uh, this uh, looks into that you know if you are actually having an embankment which is actually constructed. Uh, say equivalent to if you are having a unit weight of 20 kilo Newton per meter cube as the uh, fill material then you can see that uh, the height which is actually required is about 16 meters. Uh, if you are actually having a soft clay and placement of 16 meter fill uh, which requires also long time to for the placement and also need to be done in uh, minimum 4 to 5 stages and also have the issues of uh, stability issues and uh, base failure and all base failure and all those things cannot be ruled out. So in such situations uh, you know one have to think about uh, you know other avenues for uh, accelerating uh, consolidation settlements and uh, this uh, have evolved as the you know some sort of vertical drains uh, because uh, in, uh, in the uh, we have also discussed one problem where uh, if you are having a, a sand lens uh, which, occur, which occurs in uh, maybe in uh, uh, alluvial uh, areas and because of that what will happen is that uh, there can be a possibility of the acceleration of the consolidation. So as the horizontal drains are uh, difficult to install uh, below the ground level then one of the viable options is to go for the vertical drains with a partial replacement of uh, uh, you know the impervious uh, soil or soil having a very low permeability with a soil actually having very high permeability or having a material which actually has got that. Uh, that equivalent discharge capacity as that of uh, uh, you know the uh, the soil which actually has got very high permeability. So before that let us uh, look and uh, discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of preloading and uh, requires uh, conventional earth moving equipment any grading contractor can perform the work long uh, track record of the success. And the surcharge fill must extend horizontally at least 10 meter beyond the perimeter of the planned, planned construction which may not be possible at confined sites. Sometimes in the confined sites uh, you have to evolve and use some reinforced soil wall technique so that you will be able to have a steep uh, uh, slope uh, for the uh, particular height which is being planned and uh, then uh, one can actually fill within the uh, you know area which is actually developed to be developed. And transport of the large quantity of the soil required you know this is actually one thing where it will significantly affect the carbon credits of the project and surcharge must remain in place for months or years this uh, delays the construction and uh, moreover uh, placement of the fields beyond 10 meters can lead to uh, you know the uneconomical issues as well as the stability issues. So in such situation uh, you know we actually can thought of can be you know uh, you know or one other avenue which can be thought is that as discussed uh, earlier uh, the radial consolidation through radial consolidation uh, through uh, provision of uh, vertical drains. In order to accelerate uh, the process of consolidation settlement for the construction of some of structures the useful technique for building is to build uh, vertical drains. So vertical drains in fins in the form of sand it is actually started with the uh, uh, you know the sand uh, drains method then subsequently for a short time uh, weak drains uh, do exist then afterwards a prefabricated vertical drains actually have come into uh, picture. So the sand drains basically they are of, uh, of uh, diameter ranging from 400 to 600 mm and uh, they are actually placed by uh, you know augering a, uh, a borehole and then removal of the soil after removal of the soil uh, the, uh, the sand is actually replaced the selected sand material having certain grade characteristics and all to be has been replaced. And uh, another uh, uh, method uh, of uh, this thing which actually has come because of the, the demerits of the sand drains uh, is to large diameter and then also the, the uh, you know the 
construction uh, of these things it takes long time. So because of that you know the wick drains actually have come the wick drains also uh, the it involves the augering of the uh, borehole and then replacement of the removal of the soil and afterwards uh, a uh, wick drain with uh, a geotextile bag filled with sand is actually placed and uh, but however these also have not lasted for long but uh, in the recent past for the past uh, two decades uh, you know the prefabricated vertical drains which are actually having uh, a uh, uh, polypropylene uh, or suitable material as the core and the polyester or polypropylene geotextile as the jacket material and which actually is uh, you know tailor made product which actually has got high drainage capacity even under the, uh, the hostile conditions in the field. So the thick layers of the clay sediments take long time for the completion of consolidation. So the provision of these vertical drains what will happen is that and uh, you know the drainage paths actually has got uh, the what we, we facilitate the clay uh, you know the additional drainage paths along the radial direction. So the consolidation now in this direction it, it actually happens in radially as well as in the vertical direction. So because of that what will happen is that the rapid uh, you know the uh, mobility uh, you know uh, rapid uh, settlements will occur and the project sites can be ready in a short duration of time. So by inserting vertical drains fairly at close spacing induce much shorter uh, horizontal paths uh, for the water pore water pressure to dissipate and in turn they enable faster dissipation of excess pore water pressure and accelerate the consolidation settlements. The vertical drains are installed under a surcharge load uh, to accelerate the drainage of impervious soils and thus uh, speed up the construction. So generally the vertical drains when they are placed they are placed along with the preload or pre-compression. So the two they go with each other where once uh, the uh, first of all this on the site the drainage blanket need to be placed and which also serves as a restoration layer for access layer for the uh, site to maneuver the rigs and all. And then through that uh, the vertical drains are installed and once above, once the above that the, the fill is actually placed so that the vertical drains which are actually installed in a surcharge layer to accelerate the drainage of the impervious cells and thus the speed of the construction. And these drains provide a shorter path for the water to flow through the and get away from the soil. And time to drain clay layers can be reduced from years to couple of months. So from the, the drastically the time can actually be shortened and uh, which because of that which actually happens is that the time to drain clay layers can be reduced from years to couple of months. So this is a typical uh, uh, preloading versus uh, sand drains cross section is actually shown here wherein uh, a, uh, a typical sand drain is actually placed in a compressible soil uh, where uh, and this is the, the collected drain and this is this drainage blanket. So what, what is actually shown here is here is that you can see that the water migrates uh, you know this is the now the drainage path for this and this is what drainage path for this. So this drain actually facilitates the water and the along with the uh, you know the in case of the double drainage water flows in this direction and water flows in this direction. So with the because of this what will happen is that there is a combination of coupled consolidation actually happens where the radial consolidation and uh, uh, the vertical consolidation hammered, uh, happens simultaneously. So when you compare the components of radial consolidation and uh, uh, you know the vertical consolidation, the vertical comp uh, consolidation component will be very less, the radial consolidation component will be very high. So because of that uh, the uh, settlements will be uh, you know very fast, uh, settlements will be faster. So here uh, a preloading along with the drains is actually shown here. So with the with the preloading uh, what with the preloading along with the drains one uh, situation what can happen is that the time versus settlement diagram is shown here. So this is the, the pre-consolidation settlement which actually uh, is possible. So what we have discussed is that when we have got uh, um, when we have got only preload and uh, uh, such a permanent load and such charge we said that uh, you know this much time we have to keep the uh, permanent load, uh, surcharge uh, and then also the magnitude will be much higher. But uh, when we have got the preloading along with the vertical drains there is a possibility that this consolidation settlement can occur in a relatively short duration of time and whereas uh, another issue is that the settlements time versus settlement the settlement variation will be uh, relatively, uh, relatively faster. So because of that uh, the clay consolidates relatively faster. So here this schematic uh, 
uh, view of uh, preloading along with the sand drains is actually shown here. So, the here the vertical drains uh, one point we need to note down is that the vertical drains accelerate the settlements, but do not reduce the final settlements. It is not that you know the play placement of the vertical drains uh, will not uh, reduce the magnitude of the settlement, but they tend to uh, accelerate the settlement they tend to accelerate the settlement only. So, here a relatively uh, you know a typical uh, cross section of a uh, you know a clay uh, where uh, of thickness uh, H T uh, and H T is equal to 2 H the 2 H is this side and it is a double drainage layer and where we are having a water table here and the, uh, the fill which is actually placed here. So, here this undergoes uh, radial consolidation the water flows in this direction water flows in this direction and this zone what actually shown here uh, this is actually called as the smear zone, but if you look into this each uh, each drain uh, in the plan area it actually um, you know caters to a diameter which is actually called as the equivalent area for a drain. And uh, so, the we need to also think about what spacing we need to place them and what layout we need to place them. So, that the, the uh, radial and vertical consolidation can occur efficiently. So, the, the governing differential equation for both vertical and radial consolidation is shown is shown in this here this is after Barron's and where dou u by dou t is equal to C r into uh, dou square u by dou r square plus 1 by r dou u by dou r plus C v dou square u by dou z square. So, if you look into this now we have discussed previously the one dimensional consolidation where we actually have got this particular component only. Now, because of the radial component where we have got C r that is the quotient of consolidation in the radial direction it is also referred as quotient of consolidation in the horizontal direction as we know that quotient of permeability is uh, relatively more than uh, quotient of consolidation quotient of permeability in the vertical direction because of sigma h uh, less than sigma v for normally consolidated soils. In such situations uh, what will happen is that the c h also uh, will be uh, more than c v. So, the because of uh, the c h also c h is also more than c v. So, that also you know the permeability is actually more and the c h is also more because of that what will happen is that it contributes to the rapid consolidation uh, uh, or uh, of the uh, a clay layer under consideration. So, here the u is the excess pore water pressure r is the radial distance measured from the center of the drain well. So, this is the drain diameter what it is called and if you are actually having a uh, prefabricated vertical drain it actually comes with the uh, breadth and, uh, uh, and certain thickness then equivalent uh, diameter or equivalent uh, uh, diameter of the well is actually considered and uh, c u is uh, r is the radial distance measured from the center of the drain well and c r is the quotient of consolidation in the radial direction or horizontal direction. So, there are the two different uh, types of layouts of vertical drains are in vogue one is uh, uh, is uh, with the uh, one one is with square layout what is called this is the square layout which is actually shown here and this is uh, uh, you know this is actually uh, shown as uh, the triangular layout so you can see that each and every uh, the or orientation of this is a equilateral triangle so this magnitude is yes is called the spacing sent from center to center of the drain and uh, this height is s by root 3 and this particular uh, uh, you know uh, is uh, called as equivalent radius or this area is called equivalent diameter. So, this influences that this drain caters to the this much area. So, the water which is actually there in this direction will actually try to come into this. So, this uh, facilitates for the drainage of the uh, you know the water. Uh, so, this drainage of the water which actually happens because of the, uh, the placement of the fill above the drain. Uh, the, this is in the case of the square uh, layout where you can see that the s is the center to center distance between the uh, the drain wells and this is the uh, you know the distance s and this is the r so the equivalent uh, radius or equivalent diameters are obtained like s square which is nothing but s square s into s is equal to uh, pi r square the pi r square is nothing but this influence area so with that what we get is that r is equal to 0 0.564 s and or the r diameter is equal to 1.13 s. In the case of uh, when we have got uh, equilateral triangles, so what we do is that uh, pi r square uh, that is this area 
this area is equal to 6 equilateral triangles so we have to take into picture. So with, with that what will happen is that 6 into root over 3 by 4 into s by root whole square and by simplification you get equivalent radius as 0.525 s and which is nothing but d is equal to 1.05 s and similarly for the free fabricated vertical drains when you look into for prefabricated vertical drains as uh, being told these prefabricated vertical drains or uh, these prefabricated vertical drains are actually having a, a, a certain uh, breadth and thickness and their dimensions are relatively smaller compared to uh, the, uh, the sand drain conventional sand drains. So this is the influence zone and this is the diameter and uh, so here also the same uh, uh, you know is calculated s square is equal to pi r square r is equal to 1 by pi root root 1 by root 1 by root pi s and which is nothing but r is equal to 0 0.64 s and uh, this is for the square pattern and in case if we are having uh, 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 if we are having uh, let us say uh, is the uh, triangular pattern and the in the triangular pattern where we are actually having this hexagon what you can see is that so because of this six equilateral triangles we are considering the area of the each equilateral triangle is 3 by root over 3 by 4 into s by root 3 whole square and with this uh, area of the six equilateral triangles works out to be uh, 6 into uh, root over th root over 3 by 4 into s by root 3 whole square which comes out to be root 3 s square by 2 and which is equivalent to pi r square is equal to root 3 s square by 2 where r is equal to 0.525 s. So this is d is equal to 1.05 yes. So if you look into this, this is the equivalent diameter. So out of the two layouts which we have discussed the square layout and the triangular layout, the triangular layout was found to be efficient in inducing uniform consolidation to the soil. This is actually uh, you know reported based on the case studies which are actually uh, you know done in the field by several investigators. Uh, where by monitoring the consolidation in the field by measuring uh, settlements or measuring pore water pressures with that it has been found out that the triangular layout of the uh, you know the either PVDs or uh, the sand drains or conventional vertical drains will give uh, the efficient uh, way of uh, consolidating the uh, con consolidation of a soil. So this is a typical free fabricated vertical drain which is actually shown here. Geosynthetics basically here the Tyler made products which are actually used as the substitute for the sand columns. Uh, nowadays uh, with the availability of the sand is becoming scarce uh, and uh, with the that is the availability in the sense that the proper material. So because of that you know the use of this type of materials uh, uh, is one of the viable option and also uh, these uh, use of this prefabricated vertical drains accelerate the consolidation settlement uh, 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 equally as compared to the uh, vertical uh, conventional vertical drains as well as uh, you know the installation is actually relatively simple and faster. So this actually has got uh, a dimensions are approximately 100 mm to 4 mm there are the several designs which are actually available and the thickness is about 4 mm and uh, which actually has got uh, uh, you know this is the core where it facilitates the water and this uh, geotextile which is basically uh, non oven in nature and uh, the pore size of this geotextile is to be such that the only water enters into the drainage channels or the core channel where uh, the polypropylene core is there and uh, the clay is actually retained at the uh, boundary itself. So because of that what will happen is that uh, uh, there is a possibility that uh, the water only enters. Suppose if uh, the jute style which is actually selected is not having adequate uh, uh, you know uh, you know the large pore, size, pore, spay, pore sizes there can be possibility the clay enters and then the uh, free fabricated vertical drain uh, channels will get blocked then the efficiency of the drains will get actually affected and the subsequently the consolidation gets affected. The mostly they are about 100 mm wide and 4, 4, 4 to 5 meters 4 to 5 mm thick and they come in the rolls and they are actually installed uh, as is actually shown in the ground from the uh, from the drainage blanket. So once the um, these uh, uh, these are actually installed then uh, once it is subjected to loading then there is a possibility that the water actually uh, you know uh, face of, uh, you know uses this channel and then tries to come out try uh, in the water uh, you know 
once the water is actually uh, coming out that means that the dissipation of the pore water pressure is happening and that means the settlements are uh, you know are uh, continue to happen. So with that uh, the cons clay consolidation will be completed in relatively shorter duration. And nowadays these prefabricated vertical drains are actually being used for number of applications uh, in, in the case of like uh, municipal solid waste landfills and in order to particularly in the bioreactor landfills and they are actually being used for uh, uh, you know for uh, uh, extracting the gas and uh, with that what is actually happening is that the gas uh, extraction is becoming uh, efficient. So with the uh, and then also uh, the settlements are actually also relatively uh, faster and uh, then another thing is that if you are actually having a contaminated uh, uh, flume there is a possibility that these things can be installed and then uh, can be used for uh, uh, you know accelerating the consolidation uh, the removal of the contaminated uh, 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 zone or contaminated uh, 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 liquid which is actually trapped in the certain amount certain portion in the ground. And uh, the another uh, application which is actually in the recent past is actually coming up is that use of this uh, free fabricated vertical drains uh, for uh, mitigating uh, liquefaction which is also in this but relatively in this case uh, the soils are relatively fine that is silty sand or sand sandy soils wherein uh, this also facilitates for uh, uh, you know in the case of uh, eventuality of the uh, earthquake there will be excess pore water pressure generation and uh, these are also there is a transient in nature. And because of that what will happen there is uh, uh, a, um, a possibility of uh, provision of these things these uh, you know uh, uh, prefabricated vertical drains which facilitate the drainage uh, at the moment when it is required. So in the process what will happen is that the soil will be uh, you know prohibited from the undergoing liquefaction so that the structure will not be subjected to uh, the, the danger which, which is anticipated when these are not there. So these are you know the PVD rolls uh, which are actually uh, uh, displayed uh, here. Uh, this is uh, which actually comes in uh, number of in, uh, the certain uh, roll length, and this is the uh, you know the core. So these are different uh, manufacturers actually has got different uh, uh, core uh, styles, and this is the the jacket which is the filter jacket what is called which is actually made of again nano one uh, geotextile, and uh, these are the types of PVDs the dimensions range from 92 to 100 mm and thickness actually ranges from 3.4 to 6.1 mm. So you can see that different geotextile style filters are there and in case of some limited life geosynthetics are used that is like the jute is also can be used as a filter and the core in place of the core in case of limited life geosynthetics there are also several investigators actually worked on the uh, on uh, uh, choir as the core choir uh, choir uh, uh, as the core uh, within the jute uh, jackets and uh, these are the uh, you know different polyethylene and polyester and uh, poly polyethylene these are the different core materials and uh, these uh, different core configurations are shown here whatever may be the core configuration under pressure uh, it has to be ensured that uh, the the drain will not actually uh, you know sacrifice the, the discharge capacity. The discharge capacity in the sense that depending upon the permeability of the soil the discharge capacity of the drain will be selected. So uh, if, uh, if we are actually having a core which actually is prone to collapse with uh, uh, because of the lateral stress then it is actually going to affect the performance of a uh, performance of uh, uh, these. Uh, uh, PVDs. So these PVDs also they have got the certain quality control test first of all the tensile load and strain behavior need to be investigated and also we need to see under uh, buckling or under uh, single buckling or second to uh, um, you know two buckles what will be the permeability uh, in plane permeability and what is the discharge capacity need to be assessed beforehand and uh, once these are ensured and appropriate material need to be selected so that the uh, you know this can be used for put into use. So these are the different uh, uh, types of PVDs which actually shown here uh, different manufacturers vary the uh, core which is actually uh, shown here. So the installation in the sense that uh, the PVDs are installed by using a mandrel mounted on an installation machine and mandrel is a metallic uh, hollow tube 
either uh, rectangular or cylindrical uh, uh, and uh, the cylindrical one which actually contains the PVD. So a disposable uh, metallic shoe is actually connected at the end of the mandrel so that the PVD can be easily ins uh, inserted within the soil. After inserting the PVD the mandrel is extracted while the PVD remains in its position within the, within the ground. So schematic way of the rig which is actually shown here and uh, the roll is actually mounted and connected to this. Now with that what will happen is that the roll which actually runs like this and the PVD is actually uh, driven into the ground. So this is the mandrel. So with this uh, you know what is actually happens is the disturbance which is actually caused because of the installation of the sand drain it can be reduced. The so called the smear effect can be reduced and this is the PVD in position here. So that uh, no time the soil is in contact only it can come in contact with the soil uh, uh, while extracting this mandrel uh, once the PVD actually has been placed in the desired depth. So this is uh, you know the one of the sites where in uh, in uh, New Mumbai where the marine clay which is actually is encountered and uh, where this is for the one of the warehousing corporation where they wanted to uh, install uh, prefabricated vertical drains and then place the preload of 4.5 meter height where, where in uh, here uh, because of the confined uh, boundaries uh, on the peripheries temporarily reinforced slopes actually have been constructed and within that uh, fill area within the pond which is actually developed then in that uh, the uh, so called uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, the soil actually is placed. So before that uh, you know the uh, the, uh, the PVDs of uh, an appropriate uh, uh, variety actually have been selected and uh, this is the uh, this is uh, you know a, a PVD roll which is actually being inserted. So we will actually look into the installation how it actually happens in the field. So here you can see the softness of the clay the up the, the this this is nothing but uh, is the drainage blanket and uh, the mandrel is actually being driven into the uh, mandreling mandrel is being driven into the ground. So this is the the warehouse corporation which is actually existing warehouse corporation and this is also for uh, uh, you know enabling uh, you know placement of the loads over uh, uh, that area. So the consolidation is actually is planned to be accelerated by using the placement of the PVDs and the preloading. Uh, so afterwards uh, it is put to use for the desired purpose. So you can see that now the mandrel is being extracted and the PVD actually has come out. Uh, now it will be seen. Yeah, now the PVD will be cut and uh, the next location is actually selected and that is the placement of the sacrificing uh, shoe and uh, this will uh, be penetrated into the ground and these are actually uh, inserted at the pre-marked locations uh, so that the desired spacings of let us say 1 meter or 1.5 meter are uh, achieved and with that uh, what will happen is that uh, the 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 grid pattern which is actually here here in this case a triangular pattern has been selected as we have discussed it that this will actually ensure the uniform uh, consolidation uh, and also the relatively uniform uh, consolidation. So because of that this uh, triangular pattern has been selected you can see the ground is actually planned with the number of uh, PVDs actually have been installed and uh, this process continues of uh, installing the uh, you know PVDs. Uh, wherein uh, so the, in a way um, as we can see that uh, the installation is very very rapid uh, with that what will happen is that uh, the PVD installation can happen uh, in a relatively shorter duration. Now uh, we have actually discussed about the placement of the fill uh, uh, which is uh, normally about uh, you know we have the issues of uh, you know the stability as well as uh, the place in the procurement of these materials. So in such situations uh, in the recent past uh, uh, you know the one of the techniques which is actually coming into the picture is called vacuum surcharging and this can be efficient up to equivalent to 4.5 meter fill and uh, so 
uh, this can be you know done when we are actually having a uh, requirement of a 4, uh, 4 4.5 or uh, 8 meters uh, uh, fill and then we can uh, uh, also when we do along with uh, PVDs and this technique was found to be very very efficient. So if you look into this, this vacuum surcharging uh, this is the conventional preload and here what we said is that and if you are actually having uh, uh, you know a, uh, suppose if you are having a, a certain uh, hydrostatic pressure per water pressure when you load you actually have very high uh, initial excess per water pressure and then subsequently what will happen is that the water transfers the pressure to the soil. So with that the, the per water actually in, in case of preloading the only positive pore water pressure changes will be there. But in case of vacuum surcharging the pore water pressure changes are under the negative side it is actually called as inducing suction to the soil. So here also what will happen is that this is the effective stress change with this what will happen um, as we know that uh, once we have got the negative pore water pressure which is actually induced to the soil this uh, also uh, was found to be very efficient in uh, in increasing the uh, effective stresses uh, to the soil, but the limitation is that you know the suction can be induced up to minus 80 to 100 kilo Pascals. So it is limited to about 4.5 to 5 meter equivalent fill. So when it is used in combination with uh, um, you know the PVDs, then there is a possibility that uh, this efficiency will be very high. And uh, this how it looks like uh, in the field. And another thing is that you know controlling this. Uh, uh, or a long uh, you know large sites is actually difficult. So in such situations uh, this for the small sites uh, where we can actually avoid uh, the placement of the fills and uh, another uh, important uh, uh, issue which actually happens here is that the vacuum uh, generation can be generated instantaneously if you are actually having an efficient or uh, you know uh, pumps which are actually a vacuum pump which is actually placed. So here uh, uh, this uh, type pore water pressure changes uh, for a soil. So what will happen is that initially when uh, if this is the hydrostatic pressure which is actually there in the site then once we actually have the uh, you know suction is induced then what will happen is that the suction will actually initially will be large and then slowly that suction will get transferred into the uh, you know increasing the effective stress. So the more on this we will actually discuss in the next lecture wherein uh, we discuss about uh, uh, the uh, some design aspects of the uh, you know the prefabricated vertical drains uh, along with the preloading along with the drain what will happen in this particular example we discussed and we found that when you have uh, when you do not have the drains then there is a possibility that requirement of very high uh, you know large fill heights are required. So in such situations what will happen? Uh, when we actually have combi combination of drain and uh, uh, preload and then if we are actually having the scarcity of the fill materials then uh, one of the uh, alternatives is to go for the vacuum surcharging. So we will try to discuss about the merits and demerits of this preloading in compared with along with the uh, vacuum surcharging. In many sites uh, vacuum surcharging, prefabricated vertical loading and also a certain amount of preloading the combination is also used.